If you watch many of my videos, you know me, I hate maintaining separate estates of things. Separate collections of music, separate collections of apps. You know, you get little buckets of everything everywhere these days on all your devices. That's where Mirrorlink technology may offer some relief. This used to be called terminal mode at Nokia Technology. It's now become part of a large consortium of companies that want to basically do this. Let you take what's on your smartphone, let that be the hub of what happens in your car, and use the display of your head unit and the amplification, maybe the radio, to just sort of serve the phone. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here I am with a Nokia Lumia and I take a USB cable that goes into this Sony head unit which we're using for demonstration. As you can see when I do that it wakes up and says aha I'm connected to a mirror link technology enabled head unit. It's now going to establish a connection over this cable. Notice that we've gone into drive mode on the phone. And this is not a drive mode you can escape like on Android. You can't just say, oh, go to my desktop of apps right now so I can screw around with Facebook. No, you are in drive mode as long as you're connected here. Then go to this mirror link selection on the head unit because this is certified to work this way. And notice what we've got, a perfect replication of what's on the phone to the screen. The difference is what's on the screen is bigger, mounted, stable, and of course connected to amplification and other technologies coming into the head unit. You put this in your glove box basically and say I'm done with the phone. You can make your calls here. It's nice and big. It's an easy readout. You can have a navigation app here like it says for drive, music. All of these are services that will be built in by the phone maker onto their handset with their software stack and then echoed on the screen. It's not a very complimentary term, but basically this becomes a dumb display. And all the processing, the app load, and all of that is on the phone. Now notice though that none of this says that the head unit maker has to sit on the sidelines and just make the dumb display. They can also put in a tuner, navigation, their own Pandora, or all of these can also live under Mirrorlink. That's where you get the flexibility to decide if you want to go all Mirrorlink, phone-centric, or if you want to spread some of the functionality across two different devices. Now the roadmap on this is that the Mirrorlink people in 2013 want to get app developers on board. I'm not showing you a lot of apps right here, kind of just a few basics. They want to get the app developers on board sometime around Mobile World Congress in 2013. And then the other thing I'm waiting for is when can they get an OEM supplier to the automakers to build this technology into a vehicle that comes off the factory floor. Because the aftermarket is not where the action is anymore. This has got to become something installed within factory cars. They're also talking about that taking root in 2013. So the big idea here is manage your phone, your media, your apps, your settings, your preferences, all of that here, and not have to duplicate, replicate, or recreate that on what's built into your dash. You still have the choice of doing that but you have the choice of also simplifying. Now the folks behind Mirrorlink, the Car Connectivity Consortium, they're going to run a curated app presence once those apps start to arrive. You can't just stick any app here or access any app you install. They'll make sure that they are automotive, contextual, useful for the driver, and done in a way that is low distraction and very reliable in function. I like the idea. We'll be watching it in 2013, see how the potential develops.